on a Bond film is still as big an event as ever. My God, it's enormous. I mean, everybody knows James Bond. Everyone's seen the films. It is a little bit like a plague of locusts. It's crazy with the noise that's created by it. Most of us know James Bond as the dashing British agent 007, but the real James Bond was a man from Philadelphia. Just how did Ian Fleming's 007 get his name? I just heard it and used it. Do you know why we're making this film? Um, because you want to know what it's like to be a James Bond. My name is Bond. 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 James Bond. It's my life. Everything that has to do with James Bond. You can't be an introvert to be a James Bond. It's impossible. Imagine being told the same joke every day for a couple decades. The name is Bond. James Bond. And he's like, yeah, right, and I'm Donald Duck. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. His name, in this case, is going to haunt him. A name is something that identifies you. All it does is pinpoint where you are. He told me that he would kill me. Använda den i form av att uh, söka efter min far som är försvunnen. All units, we have a location on a homicide suspect. Name Bond, James. If I was a real James Bond, I would never get caught because James Bond killed plenty of people and he's still out there. So if he kills somebody, hey, okay, well that's James Bond, that's the white James Bond. But the black James Bond, oh, he's doing it. It has been both a blessing and a curse. He just admitted that he took it, just lifted it, stole it. And I thought, well, that James Bond is a pretty good man. There's a lot of James Bonds, right? So I can never get that email address. So my email address is the.other.james.bond. I'm the other one. Welcome, everybody, to the Really 007 oh. podcast for this look at the award-winning documentary, The Other Fellow. And uh, yes, they, they beat us to it in the Bond Community Awards, the Golden Bullet Awards. And unfortunately, we lost out. But, you know, ours took about five minutes on an iMovie and... Uh, Matthews took about 10 years, so fair enough. <laughs> you guys won a golden bullet for best podcast or something, didn't you? Yeah, we did best podcast episode for our interview with Charlie Higgs. Well, well, so, yeah. can, can, can I ask you say, have you actually received your golden bullet? Uh, we okay. haven't, but to be fair, it was in America, and I'm sure the shipping costs are large. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've been watching the video, and, and I, I have a suspicion that there may actually only be one trophy because ah, if, right. if, if you look at it at the start of each one they like hand the trophy to the winner and then it disappears and then something kind of goes on by on the screen yeah. and then <laughs> the next trophy appears over here and then Zaritsky won like four of them but yeah. in yeah. photo afterwards he's only holding <laughs> one award and say so it's a bit of a conspiracy theory but I think there may be only one yes golden bullet out there that's the magic of cinema, isn't it? I think you've the magic of cinema. Yes. Anyway, this is this is Matthew Bauer. Anyway, the the creator, the director, the producer, the visionary behind the other fellow documentary. So welcome, welcome, Matthew. Thank you. Very nice to be here. Um, yeah, we're we're out in the UK on streaming today, so it's fun fun doing some of this and kind of meeting some of you, the, some of the fans. Yeah. I am. I'm actually in Australia right now. Oh, yes. you are right. So you are Australia. Yeah. On with <laughs> Australia and the bloody North Pole Arctic Circle here today. We'll have to introduce our second guest, and I mean, all, I mean, he'll get this all the time. But unlike some of the people on the documentary, he'll love this. His name is Bond, James Bond. So welcome, welcome, James. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to be here with you guys here today. And oh, I can tell you. In uh, Nybro, Sweden, today we have in north of Sweden minus forty-five degrees. Minus in, forty-five. Yeah, in North Pole, you know, in Jukkasjärvi, they, you know, the ice hotel are there. Yeah. And minus forty-five degrees, and it's a lot of snow, and it's so windy. So yeah, it's like uh, northern pole or Antarctic. Yeah, it's very cold. A bit like the beginning of a view to a kill. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
you're in your own museum i can see there as well james yes 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 so yeah we have not so cold here in Ibu, we have about five minus de degrees so it's better here in south of sweden of course yes well i was actually in stockholm uh, in the summer and it was lovely but that yeah there was no snow then i'd love to see the snow in sweden <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have snow sometimes in uk yes yeah yeah not as much unfortunately we didn't have a white christmas but uh, no, yes, we we have we have our range of weather, which is we, we're just not very good at coping with it, unlike Sweden and most of Europe. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, it's good uh, to have yeah. you, you here, guys. So <laughs> great. Yeah. So Matthew, of course, has created this documentary, The Other Fellow. Now that, of course, is a reference Bond fans will know to the George Lazenby line in On a Majesty's Secret Service. This never happened to the other fellow. Matthew, what was your inspiration? And I suppose you start something and then it snowballs, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, so the film is about real men around the world who are named James Bond um, and what it's like for them to, you know, live in the shadow of, you know, the the other James Bond. Um, and obviously when I had the idea for the film, that line immediately just sung out as as the title for the film because obviously it's Connery referring, sorry, Lazenby referring to Connery you know what I mean? The 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 far more famous James Bond the, the, than he is, um, and so it made sense, you know, you know, to use that line. Um, and so, you know, to me in the film, the the other fellow to me is James Bond 007, You know, and we've got all of these real men around the world, and there's this other fellow out there who sort of haunts their lives, I guess. Um, in in the case of your guest today, he's the one counterbalance of the film who's actually the James Bond who absolutely loves the name and the association. Whereas, you know, I mean, you've seen the film now, um, you know, for most of the others, it, it's it not something they like. No, that's absolutely right. And it starts actually, doesn't it, explaining the origins of the name. When I started to write these books in 1952, I wanted to find um, a name which wouldn't have any of this a romantic uh, overtones like Peregrine Carruthers or whoever it might be. I wanted a really flat, quiet name. And one of my Bibles out here is uh, James Bond's Birds of the West Indies, which is a very famous uh, ornithological book indeed. And I thought, well, now, James Bond, now that's a pretty quiet name. And so I simply Used it. That's had pros and cons for everybody else, but I guess when he named the yeah. character, he did not know how successful it would be. Yeah, well, I mean, it, I, I think it's got a lot to do with like the longevity of Bond as well. I mean, Fleming, you, you'll see in the, in the film, we have the kind of original interview with Ian Fleming where he talks about it. Um, and he does talk about it more, but we could only afford to buy so much of that interview. But he goes <laughs> on to say, that at the time heroes were called things like Peregrine Carruthers or Bulldog Drummond. Yeah. And he wanted instead a really flat, quiet name. And when you think about it, I think that actually has more to do with the longevity of James Bond than anything else. I can't imagine if he had a called James Bond Peregrine Carruthers, it, if it would last. Whereas James Bond is a name which hasn't dated. Yeah. Um, and so I think in some ways it was kind of fortuitous. And also, though, of course, because he chose this very ordinary name, unfortunately for the thousands of men around the world who also, sh I'm sure there weren't too many Peregrine Carruthers out there. Yeah. Um, and this film obviously explores the fallout of that. Yeah, and it, it, I mean, I won't spoil it, but it also goes into details about the actual James Bond from the West Indies, who he got the name off, and the sort of reconciliation they had, which I thought was a very... Well, it reflected very well both on him and Ian Fleming, I thought. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm mean, okay to go into it a bit. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. it's it's no, normally, I think most of us, especially Bond fans, are familiar with the fact that Fleming took the name from the Birds of the West Indies book. Um, and I kind of thought the story ended there. But then when we started looking into it, it turns out actually a lot happened to that original James Bond to the point where he actually went to GoldenEye to, to meet Ian Fleming. Um, and basically his wife actually wrote a book about this called How 007 Got His Name. And on the press tour for that book in 1965, she was interviewed by the BBC World Service. 
Um, and so we eventually found that original interview with her. And even though it was only five minutes, she was telling the exact story of all the questions I would have asked and, you know, how they found out about the name and what it was like for them when, you know, they started getting weird phone calls um, and that kind of thing. It, it was cut out of the film because we couldn't have a place for it, but it's something she said she quite liked because they were getting all these prank phone calls, right? And eventually she started telling people that, you know, when they call asking for James Bond, she'd say, oh, this is pussy galore and he's busy now. Um, and so <laughs> she started having some fun with it. But yeah, so she, they eventually went to Goldeneye to meet Fleming and it happened just a few months before he died and they managed to catch it on film. Um, and we eventually managed to track that film down um, and kind of piece together their original story. And so I think kind of in there, there is a part of like actual real James Bond history that I think most people know or have never seen before. And it's a good connection with you, James, because Ian Fleming, it has a massive place in your life. And that was very moving to see you, well, sort of t tell us about how you came to have the name. That was amazing. Yeah, actually, I, I wrote a book about my life. You see oh, this? Yeah. Half Ian Fleming and half my dad, uh, the faces of this. That's wonderful, yeah. Yeah, you, so... Uh, yeah, just tell us a bit about your your background and you, your dad, yeah. Yeah, my dad was uh, born in Germany in 1911, uh, outside Nuremberg, and he was serving during World War II for uh, Germany in the Navy from 1939 to 1945. After that, he swimming, uh, escaped to Sweden, actually 1945, before end of the World War II in the beginning of Ma March. So he actually swimming uh, over a return channel between Denmark and Sweden for over eight hours. And I don't know actually how he can survive because it was cold outside and it was so much he had struggled with his problem in the cold water and, and and anyway he came to hospital in Helsingborg for one week and he after that 1945 he, he came to this area in Sweden Nibro and he actually get married to another girl first 1945 31st of December and uh, before he met my mother and they was married 1950 so uh, 1957, I was born, uh, and uh, 59 went my father back to his parents in Germany, and uh, after that we never seen him. He he disappeared, and Interpol searched for my dad for 10 years before he was declared dead. 1969. So during this period, when I go to school uh, with other guys, they told. After school, we're going to play soccer with my dad. You, you, you do that with your dad. We're going to fishing. We do a lot of stuff with your dad. But I didn't have any dad. So I, I sat on the library in Nibro and saw some books upon Fleming. And I read about his story. And maybe, maybe this is what my dad had his story experienced during his life, you know, in World War II. So, uh, I saw uh, like a father's figure for 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 me in this character that Fleming were. So yeah, it's a very complicated and long story. And I mean, yeah, it, it's running for 1911. My dad was born, so 113 years actually. So yeah. yeah. Well, and it's it's done really well in the documentary, um, Matthew, because you do well flashbacks essentially reconstructions of um james's story yeah yeah we had we, we tried a lot of those things with photos at first but we kind of realized especially with his father's story it kind of let us have a very kind of fleming-esque world war ii sort of sequence um and you know a bit of a funny story i mean you'll see james has got the james bond museum there so james actually came to england to buy the hovercraft from die another day and, and i'm sure he'll show you at some point here he has the hovercraft from <laughs> die another day. and i went along to film that and we were buying it from this old it's called the the, the hovercraft museum here in the uk and it's an old um like british naval station with all the old world war ii you know stuff around 
And I ended up saying to them, hey, we've actually got this other sequence we want to film for this movie. Could I film it here? And so they let us then film at the old Hovercraft Museum. And you'll see there's a scene, for instance, on a train that's a flashback of his dad on the train going back to Germany. That's actually on the hovercraft from Diamonds of Forever, like the big one that Connery rides on, which is now at the Hovercraft Museum. And we went, we can use that to look like a train. Um, anyway, a, lo a lot of those kind of fit. We didn't tell them we were turning it into a Nazi airbase after the <laughs> owners of the museum went home. We got all the short stickers out. But anyway, um, yes. But yeah, that's how things tend to go with Mr. Bond here. Kind of one thing <laughs> just sort of, sort of leads to another. So tell us, um, James, what, when exactly did you decide, right, I'm going to change my name to James Bond? I around um, 2006, I think, because 2007, it became like, oh, oh, seven, you know, it ended with that. Yeah. So I thought, yeah, wh why not? Because it happened every thousand year, only once. So I, I just sent a message to the Swedish tax board and and ask them if I could add uh, or change name to Bond, James Bond in that order. So they approved 2007 and gave me information. Uh, and I had a call from uh, this, this lady who worked with this. And she told me, you don't have, you cannot uh, change your name uh, more. And this time, otherwise you have to go to the, another position in Sweden to change name or change, you know, like that. So, yeah, it, it was complicated. And she was very, ups what can you say, angry. You can change once, but not twice. So <laughs> a funny a phone call from her. And, and uh, I should know her, uh, meet her, uh, because I want to know why she was angry when I changed the, my the, name. The, the Swedes don't really have a lot of time for you know what I mean? Someone changing their name to James Bond. It's not the kind of thing the Swedish <laughs> yeah. find, find very funny. I think I find it really funny, but in Sweden, they're very different, aren't they, James? Like, they're not into this sort of thing. No, in not that mood. No, no. <laughs> it's more like, you know, it is cold in winter. You should stay at home. You you should not do anything opposite or something that ignore uh, people that be angry about something, you know, uh, of uh, changing, uh, change your car, uh, change your house. No, nothing. You can do nothing. Just stay alive and do only ordinary thing, nothing else. You know, that, that's Swedish people here. Well, your life is not ordinary at all. Never mind your background and how you were born and all that and your upbringing. But your life now as James Bond it's changed forever, hasn't it? It's you are basically living the life of James Bond 007. Yes, yes, uh, it became like a uh, red line in my in my life with, with all this reference to 07, Aston Martin, Martinez, Champagne, Fleming, uh, Golden Eye, my house in Calma, and mentioned that after Fleming's holes in Jamaica, Golden Eye. So I try to find as possible so much uh, that reminds me of his life and legacy of Fleming and my dad, you know, of course, because he was born in Germany. So my half uh, heart belongs to Germany and the rest of Sweden. And then came also, of course, Fleming in my life. So, yeah, it's a mix of everything. Yeah. And I mean, there is a lot in a name. And in the documentary, you'll see lots of people are fed up with people going up to them oh is that your real name you know and making fun of them <laughs> but you you embrace it you you absolutely love it you you're walking around in a tuxedo most of the time James and you're, <laughs> you're ordering pizzas with 007 on and it's what a life it must be <laughs> yeah 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 I have as you can see different license plates for my cars yeah. uh Fleming yeah Fleming brilliant <laughs> and GB00 Seven. So, yeah, and of, yeah. So, so I mean, it's so ma many things that I, I think it's make me whole like a person also when you do like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, as you said, the other guys have like a curse to have the name, and I, I think for my sake, it, it's like, yeah, it, it's it's coming closer to my dad and, and even Fleming because we were actually in. 
Seven Hampton and Ian Fleming's grave, Matt and we, yeah. uh, to record some of the sequence there, as you saw in the film. So that was I don't think, that, yeah, that was very emotionally for me. Uh, and it was very nice to see the story and it, the end of the story for Fleming and his life, actually, with Anne and Casper also, of course. Fantastic, yeah. And I mean, in terms of the name James Bond, you, you hear the debates now that we don't have a Bond at the moment. Oh, the next. Who will the next James Bond be? And people say, "Well, he 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 can't be black. He can't be gay." And we've got we've got absolutely all sorts of James Bonds on this, haven't we, Matthew? Which just shows James Bond can be yeah. can be anyone, which is brilliant. Yeah, I mean, we kind of wanted to reflect that a bit in the film. Yeah. We did want to kind of go with this cult. You know, whenever the new Bonds coming out, it's always like, "Oh, can they be black? Can they be yeah. gay? Can they be a woman?" Not to give away too yeah. many spoilers, but. Can, you know, can James Bond be this? And what what can James Bond be? And what can't James Bond be? And like, frankly, I think it's nonsense. Flame wars between Guardian readers and Daily Mail readers. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, I mean, I mean, the producers of the Bond films have never said Idris Elba is going to be the next James Bond. Idris Elba has never said he's going to be the next James Bond. It's it, it, it's it's. The, but the the culture likes to have these arguments about this. Um, and yes, so we wanted to have, you know, black James Bonds, gay James Bonds. And I think especially in the film, it's interesting to see what what it's like for those guys, um, because in some ways they have a greater contrast between them and James Bond. But it also gives them an easier out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're kind of able to go like, I'm I'm gay. I'm not I'm not like James Bond. I'm gay. I'm not like James Bond. I'm black. The the guy who found it the hardest was actually the straight white forty year old male in London who you see yeah. in the film. Yeah, and he changed his name to something else because you can imagine growing up in London with this name and constantly being like, you know, like oh, oh, you know, do do you sleep with as many women as 007, yeah. You know, and all this sort of thing. He, he couldn't stand it anymore and changed it. Um, so yeah, we wanted a very diverse cast. and But what happened was in the end, we had so many people that kind of hated it. it. The film was getting very negative and we wanted a counterbalance. And when we discovered James, it, it, we actually discovered him because it, as I say, James is a slightly controversial figure in, in Sweden because what he does goes very against the grain of, of yeah. Swedish culture and I think James especially with his upbringing on Fleming and stuff is a much more kind of sort of internationally minded person than the people who live where he lives there um, and I actually got an, a message from somebody who said I've heard about your film and I'm really happy that the Swedish James Bond isn't in the movie and I'd never heard of the Swedish James Bond at this point and Googled Swedish James Bond and was like, <laughs> oh my God, who's this guy? And at first he was what we were trying to avoid having in the film because we didn't really want lookalikes and that kind of thing. But in James, we found somebody who had actually gone so far to the other side. I mean, I always say a lot of what he does seems a bit kind of crazy at, at, at first, you know, and, you know, you know, replacing his father with James Bond and, you know, buying all of his cars and having this giant museum and everything. But it, he's actually gone so far with it that it starts to make sense yeah. again. You know what I mean? And he says in the film that, you know, when you're James Bond, you get to do all these things that other people don't get a chance to do. And James has led a far more interesting life as James Bond than he would have if he wasn't James Bond, you know? And it kind of, I, I think it's kind of genius personally. Like it's, it, it's been a really cool kind of life for him, you know? And especially, you know, even just doing this film recently and all the kind of stuff involved with that. Um, yeah, I, I think he has been a lot happier as James Bond than Gunnar Schaefer, you know, his, his previous identity. Um, yeah, and on the flip side, our London James Bond, he's been much happier as James yeah. Hart than he was as James Bond. You know, so each to their own. Because it is an emotional journey for each James Bond on the the other fellow. You get some people who, yeah, you start it's all a bit jokey, but then no, it does get a bit depressing, and then others, yeah. the opposite. And I do, I did think it was so well balanced how you had both sides, you had both emotion emotions. Very funny as well. Lots of funny moments. Yeah. But that I mean, I mean, we obviously the, deliberately we obviously yeah. deliberately picked characters who had some some kind of dramatic twist in their story. You had thousands of people called James Bond who came forward or 
hundreds. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Look, I've, I've probably spoke with something in the low hundreds, you know what I mean? Um, and, and actually probably Skyped with about a hundred or so. Oh. Uh, but I, I have a lot of, obviously, James Bond Facebook friends um, and that yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> our social media or whatever there's often a lot of james bonds commenting who who aren't in the film no. um yeah but obviously I, I spoke with a lot of guys who were great but there was nothing there wasn't that extra thing in their story and at the start of the film they all kind of just seem like ordinary men named james bond and of course by the end a lot of them are on the run from the police or from stalkers or or, or what have you and a lot of them not to give away spoilers, but a lot of them are actually connected yeah, in ways yeah. you don't realize at the start of the film. Um, yeah. What did you, you only saw this yesterday, D didn't you? Not to take yeah, over. Yeah, you only saw yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what did you, not, I'm not trying to extract a good review out of you, but what, what did you think when you saw it for the first time? Oh, I'll be honest, because I, in the, we it came out, of course, uh, was it October time or was it before? It's before it came out of the cinemas in in May. In May. Oh, so yeah, so it's a long, long time ago. And I know that a few Bond fans. There was a like a premiere in New York. Was that right? You had. Yeah, we had one in, in New York and one in London. Yeah, yeah, and that was the one with David Zaritsky, was it? Yeah, he he did the kind of New York thing for yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, and and I just looked at then. I thought I don't really, I couldn't understand quite the concepts of it that. Until you see it, you just there's no real way of sort of getting getting into it. And people call James Bond. Well, that's just their name. We need until you actually see the stories and see the people. Only then will you get it. So since I've seen yeah. it, I've just been telling everybody, please watch this. You've got to watch it. It's absolutely brilliant. No, it is. It's magnificent. Yeah. And the fact that it's it took a life of its own. It's taken ten years. Makes it even better yeah. because. The stories develop, people's lives drastically change within that time. I'm thinking particularly of James Bond Jr. <laughs> in America. Yeah. Another incredible story. Amazing. Yeah, no, he was cool. I mean, for me, it was about, you know, I'm a Bond fan, but also a documentary and cinema yeah. fan. And I kind of saw it, and it is often hard to get it across, but for me, it's almost this slightly like science fiction existence these guys are living in. It kind of is real people literally living within the kind of digital noise of yeah. this James Bond phenomena um, that we kind of always talk about. And I mean, that's what I always kind of found interesting. And it's like, I, I don't know if you know what I mean, but these characters and the world in the film, it's this kind of weird space that these guys live in that we explore. No, it's absolutely fantastic, Matthew. And in fact, I was going to go to some, I mean, some of the reviews, obviously... You won that that award, but you've won other awards, haven't you? And other, um... aside from the Golden Bullet yeah, Award, yeah, yeah. We, we, we've been long listed for like the British Independent Film Awards. I don't want to say the Golden Bullets aren't yeah. serious; they are in the Bond community. But yes, we, we've won some cinema yes. <laughs> awards and <laughs> film that sort of thing. Yeah, and one of them I saw that you you were at festival with Mark Kermode, who we love. That must have been great meeting him. That was amazing. Yeah, that was. It's called the Shetland uh, Screenplay yeah, Festival. Yeah, amazing. Up in the Shetland the Islands, and yeah, Mark had seen the film um, and gave it a reasonably good review on his sort of podcast. Um, and then he he curates that festival, and and then we he invited us to come up um, there and screen the film. Um, yeah, and it, and it played really well. And yeah, his his support for the film has been like kind of kind of incredible. I've been a fan of his for many years, and. It was the most surreal experience in a very long time. Just listening, you know, when you've been listening to him for years, there's something yeah. you need to review it for the film. Um, yeah, it, it it was cool. It was cool. Um, not not to I, I see we've only got like nine and something minutes left on this. I just wanted to give James and you guys yeah. all the space to have a good look around because I know he's gonna yeah. have a lot of cars and hovercrafts to show you. So I, look, I, James. I mean, we've been seeing some of it in the background, but Yes. This, yeah. It, this could take hours and hours, but let's just have a brief, brief tour we're of your. We're going to do a ten-minute tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We can go for a little tour here, yeah. but uh, yes, you can scratch on the uh, just on the surface because it's so much stuff around here. It's impossible to see everything, but I can show you. A little here is the room with the autograph and some clothes oh. from the ladies. Of course, a the, lot the, of the camera. Bollinger. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so when it's people come in, can they like could they buy a Bollinger there or all these? Yes. 
We could. Yes, of course. Yeah, we can have a shaken, not stirred, dry martini. Brilliant. Bar. Yeah. No, the bar, yeah. You know. yeah. And here you can have like an interactive room that the people can play some Nintendo Golden i64. Oh. Um, then we have Xbox here. I think it's very important to get all the family, kids and women and women and, yeah. and, and, and older people, you know, and, and young people and everybody should do something here. In like we with the Golden Eye, of course, and GameCube. You have GameCube oh, yeah. also. Nightfire. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. So many recognize themselves when they come here. And here you can also play Blackjack. Oh, wow. Uh, Brilliant. So do you know how to play all these games? Yeah. And of, you know of course, games, yeah, yes, of course. <laughs> well, you're James Bond, aren't you? So? <laughs> it's like like a casino when you the, the the bond meet the girl and the bad guy in the beginning of the movies, you know. Yeah. And here you also do you can do the same, and you can also teach people to play like roulette and kids and everybody, you know. This so is... they can try by themselves, and they don't lose any money. Yeah, yeah. That's the best of all. <laughs> <laughs> and here you have also television everywhere in the room uh, that explains a little of the story behind this. Here you have a couple from Brussels who visit me last year and yeah they took a plane from blush brussels to new calma airport and and then we rent a limousine and they we took them here to the museum and then back again so i mean it's always like you can do like that also when you come to sweden yeah from uh, copenhagen or yeah uh, to land in from stockholm and so on so on you can see natalia's amazing uh, bikini Wow. Yeah, this is Isabella, La Perla, yeah. what's the name of the manufacturer? She's uh, actually, uh, the one that she wears in the film. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that. yeah so you, we have this on uh, people to see, uh, of course. And I have that in London also when we were on ITV there, if you remember, Matt. Yeah, you were on this morning, yes. weren't you? I saw that. Yeah. Yes. yes. J James Bond was one of Phil and Holly's final guests. Uh, on yeah, the yeah. In a clip that is aged like milk, as they say. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Um, it's awkward yes. picture. We finally were on, on the show, and now every time we post it, we get some very interesting comments. But yeah. Anyway, you just keep going. So, so I, I know the museum like the back of my hand because I've spent about two weeks here. So I think we want to get to the big hangar with all of the big things oh, wow. but i also know the wi-fi starts to drop out so we'll yeah, see okay. what, what happens yeah just to mention a little library actually from me and fleming here also yeah so yeah. people can take some books and read them from the beginning here oh brilliant yeah 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 so wow. I, I go of course here is fleming this is vast <laughs> and now we go for a tour we so i think we just lose so Beyond this door is is the Moonraker gondola, the Aston Martin, the the plane from Goldeneye, the the hovercraft from Die Another Day. However, it's also where the Wi-Fi. Oh, oh there we go. We've got a bit yes. of it. This is where the Wi-Fi drops out. I don't know if it's in. Yeah. Well, you can see you can see that's from Fior Eyes Only. The, the Fior Eyes Only. Well Lotus. done. The Fior Eyes Only Lotus, and then the that? Goldeneye Cessna is behind it and i think you can just see the aston martin on the left oh yeah and that is that the one from is it the dine of the day or the casino real one i can't quite i think it's the dine of the day yeah i mean what's funny with james doesn't quite come through in the film but james actually loves die another day because obviously it's set in a very similar place to him yeah so he does have a specific thing for die another day and if you're a die another day fan he's got the you know like the snowmobiles from die another day and the cars from that um oh, as well. wow. oh here we go, here we go. Oh, the, tuk -tuk. the gondola we have the tuk tuk from octopussy is that there's the gondola there, yeah long tail boat from thailand bangkok oh really from the, yeah, this... the man with yeah. golden gun Oh, so my. this is this is the actual one that was taken back to Sweden 1977 again. <laughs> so this is crazy, yeah. And this this little plane here, what can you tell us about that? Uh, a Cessna plane. They have uh, similar, not the same uh, as they have a license to kill and gold and I. But oh, this is was, uh, yeah. the one which yeah. flies. Yeah. So this is one of the actually a found one here in uh, Sweden that. 
one old guy should sell it because he was retired. And I bought it. This is 1969. Oh. Uh, and this is engine is Rolls Royce actually. Fantastic! Look at this. <laughs> and now we go for a <laughs> motorcycle, and uh, we have also Whoa. like a snowmobile. Oh, tomorrow never dies. Yes, that's right. This and oh. snowmobile is from Die Another Day. Oh well, yeah. We were just saying with Matthew that we love Die Another Day. Because it is fantastical. Yeah. And... Pierce, Pierce Brosnan is James's favorite James Bond. Oh, right. So Brilliant. Oh, real, yeah. real Brosnan era thing yeah. going on. That's, that's interesting because usually the the fans of Brosnan are sort of, I, I don't know, yeah, our age or younger. So that's really refreshing. It's fantastic. This is the school buy from Life is to Kill. Oh, my word. I bought it in it London. Matt, Matthew, you can tell about when you took uh, They came with the, uh, you took I, it actually. I, I, I've become the London shipping station yeah. for the James. <laughs> so James buys stuff on eBay and sends it to my house. So I had the speed from license to kill in my house for a year. That's our um, favorite one. So this is amazing. That's and now done. we came to the hovercraft. Oh, there we go. Oh, here we go. Dine of the day. Look at that. I, yes. That's a fantastic scene, that. That's an amazing in the pre-title well, segment. It's worth observing as well. Some of the things in the museum are just, you know, the same model cars yeah. in the film. But this is the actual hovercraft here. Oh, look at that. That's so good. I like that how is... you put the Die Another Day standee in the hovercraft. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how you get these things to the Swedish countryside is beyond me. But this is amazing. Oh, yeah. The... And you have also diamonds, the suitcase. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Then... This is Samsonite. In... Yeah, when he's in disguise, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, this was the Diamonds of Forever when Peter Franks go to uh, from France to uh, England, UK, yeah, yeah. with with Wanda the Hood from the engine of the Princess Margaret, I think it was. Oh, the, yes, the hovercraft. Yeah. yeah hovercraft exactly. Crew. <laughs> so here also like Warwick Jacobs, he was there, he worked with this and he had this uh, in his position. This is he my ran name. this uh, I mean, Hovercraft Museum. I'm so sorry, but we, we are running out of time. This is this is awful. Yeah, we have a Goldfinger star ticking clock countdown about yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not chasing because we... we but, but you actually like, got through the whole museum tour, right? I didn't think you would, yeah. but that's quite an express tour. That's very good. And there's so many yeah. things in the background that we, you know, you can just about see bits of. We saw the Spectre, the school outfit. We saw that. We saw lots of the yep. Bond women outfits. This is a poster oh, as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, the old posters from the old Bond movies from the beginning. Oh, these are wonderful. Well, I've, yeah. I've got to say. Yeah, they uh, are. Very good. Before we go, thank you so much for joining us. And the main, the main thing to say, Matthew, is that the other fellow is now on ITVX, so it's free for everyone. Yeah, yeah. well, I'd say anyone in the UK now, um, internationally in the US, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. Uh, but otherwise, if you go to theotherfellow.com, all the kind of links are there. But yes, from today, it's out in the UK. Um, and I will give James a plug. If anyone ever wants to visit the James Bond Museum, it is in Nibro, Sweden, which is about your best thing is to fly to Copenhagen and get a 90 minute train. If you're a Bond fan, it is, it's a star. I mean, you're only, you're only seeing the kind of large things here. You'll see every shelf has a thousand things on it. And if you are a Bond fan, um, yeah, it's, it's quite special. And I think James, you started having people showing up who've seen the film now, right? Didn't you have one recently? Yes, yes, we have actually from Australia. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was here in Stockholm and he visited uh, in the summer. Uh, he saw that last, I think, yeah, last year we, we were, when we record uh, the premiere in uh, after New Zealand, you came to Australia. Is... And he had seen that and he had his visit here to Nibra actually, and he was amazing. He liked that. He said, <laughs> Otherwise, he shouldn't shouldn't come. So yeah, it was cool to see him. Goodness me! So, in terms of the museum, what, when did you first have the idea for that? Uh, actually, I started collect when I was eight years old, nineteen sixty-five. I bought like a, a small 
Aston Martin, you know, everybody bought him. Uh, Aston Martin DB5, we, we get the seat and everything. Yeah, yeah. And and then it slowly, you know, <laughs> I thought maybe in the future I should have something to to buy more stuff and like that. And I think when I saw Golden Eye 1995, I should uh, travel around the world to see different, you know, Bond museum, different um, uh, exhibition or like that. I, but I was very surprised I didn't find anyone. No, they have no. like on War Museum, Imperial Museum, they have like a small exhibition and and uh, on like uh, stores in London, they have exhibition for that kind of film. So I thought I could start by myself. So I started, I think, 2002, I started actually a small exhibition in, in a, like a guest house or uh, like a restaurant in south of Kalmar. And after that, I took the tier to Nibru. And after that, yeah, 2002, it became like true. So anyone can rock up, knock on your door and then ring the doorbell and you'd be giving them a, a private showing of your museum. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yes, it is. It's like a dream come true, actually, for me. And I, 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 I don't think every day, I think when I am here in the museum, I think, what is going on? What, what, uh, how could I do this? <laughs> I, I don't know, actually, by myself. Just, it's right running and, you know, it, it, you have like a celebration of 60 years, celebration of 50 years, 40 years, 30 year from the Bond movies, it never stops. It's going on and on and on with different things that they release from Eon or, you know, like Corey or like a guitar that they bought recently. Uh, it never stops. It's crazy. And it's your your gift to the world, isn't it? To Bond fans. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. a way. And hopefully in the end of this, I get more information about my, my relatives in Germany or where they are now. We don't know actually, but maybe they see something about this film and recognize themselves when I heard about the story back in time about what people disappear or something like that. And maybe, ah, we know this guy or we have like a relationship with, with this guy in Ubro. So hopefully we get something in the end of this. Yeah. I mean, like I said before, that was a very moving part of the documentary. And I can only commend you. Um, Matthew, just before we go, I was looking on Rotten Tomatoes and 93%, I think it's on at the moment, which is only only below five Bond films. So you, you're in good company there. <laughs> we are we are, we are in good company. So someone someone in a review the other day said we were the best Bond film since Skyfall, which I Yeah, I, I, I think that's right, yeah. I won't. I, I won't comment on those things. Yeah, we were at a hundred percent until the bloody Guardian came along. But anyway, um, yes, we're at ninety-three percent of Rotten Tomatoes, which I, I I can't complain. Um, yes, it's 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 pretty cool to have that. And you know, I was amazed because I was like, you, you know, I mean, th this film it really is a film about men named James Bond. Just yeah. to be clear, there's there's no secret, but there is a bit of a secret behind the film. But it is a film about men named James Bond, and you know. I, I was like, this could be rejected wholesale. I mean, I mean they, you would think uh, it, there should be some people who go, I think this is the stupidest movie ever made. Why would I ever want to watch this? But the reviews started coming in and people kind of got it and really liked it, yeah. um, which was cool. And I think, you know, a, a lot of, it is funny with all the different characters, everyone has their favorites and, and not favorites. Do you know what I mean? There are some, particularly the Americans love, the Swedish James Bonds, you know what I mean? They're like, oh, he's he's the emotional heart of the film. But then there are some people who are like, why are we spending all this time in Sweden with a man who changed his name to James Bond? Um, and, you know, people have, you know, you'll see there's the gay American James Bond. Oh, yeah, Bond he's brilliant. Yeah. The app to the casino. And some people love him. They think he's hilarious. Yeah. And some people are like, oh, God, this guy is so negative. When's he going to shut up? Um, I felt so a bit I think... sorry for him at that part when he had to keep saying the same line over and over again with different states and because it it's become a curse, yeah. for him, hasn't it? The name, the catchphrase, really. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 been pretty bad for him. But I mean, what I've learned through this film is that it's kind of about your attitude to adversity. Yeah. 
Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Like some of them in the film, you'll see there's the Texas family in the film. Yeah. They look- have such a wonderful attitude about the name. It's almost this celebration within their family that they're the Bond family. And they have such a good attitude about it. And they're so at peace with it. Whereas, you know, the 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 New York James Bond who hates it so much and spends his life just complaining about it all the time, you know, hasn't found peace with it, you know. And I think there, there, there is a lesson in that, that often the problem is actually your attitude to the problem in your head and not the problem itself, if that makes sense. That does, that encapsulates it very much so. And, I mean, we've got to say goodbye to you, to you both now, but you are the most positive James Bond there is. And there's a, that probably includes the actors there. <laughs> Thank you very much for t- taking us an amazing tour. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, Thank you very much, guys. And, and nice to talk to you. Yeah, you're, you're right. right. He's the happiest James Bond in the world. <laughs> More <laughs> happy than the last one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, see okay. you guys. Right. Take care, guys, and we'll see you soon. And we'll, we'll yeah, hope you appreciate you being soon. Thanks a lot, mate. Bye-bye. You can hear loads of our other episodes on iTunes, Spotify, and our YouTube channel, where we have interviews, special episodes, and reviews of all the Bond films. Simply search Really007Pod, and you should find loads of weird and wonderful content.